Cheers, Jeff. Oh, thanks, mate. Busy tonight, Dougie. Yeah, I'm not complaining. Oh, no, I'm sure you're not, but this lot will be once the tongues are touching the bootlaces before they get a drink. Yeah, well, you'll just have to work a bit harder then, won't you? Hey, I'm already doing you a favour with all these extra shifts. No, 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 Betty. You're doing no one a favour. You're getting paid. It's a favour as far as I'm concerned. When I could be at home in front of the telly with a mug of cocoa, <laughs> no mind about what I'm getting paid. You're going to have to take on some extra staff, Dougie. I mean, we're already one down with Toya off. Gina's off tomorrow. Yeah. It's bound to have an effect. I can't afford to go taking on extra staff at the drop of a hat. No. No, oh, you'd rather ride the old ones down into the ground, wouldn't you, first? <sighs> oh, Peter. I've been thinking about what you were saying last night about getting in some relief staff while Toya's off. Oh, yeah. Well, you could have a point. After all, Betty's legs aren't what they used to be, are they? <laughs> no. Hey, let me tell you. Yeah? A woman with plenty of front, not afraid to show it, that's what you want behind that bar, let Yeah, me well, tell you. I think I know what to look for in a bar, mate. But I can't see me filling the post today, so with Gina off... You and I are still gonna have to pull together. <laughs> what about me? I can help out. Oh, yeah, I can just see every bloke in Weatherfield queuing up to get served by a Grim Reaper. Yeah, I think what Peter's trying to say, Edna, is that it's hard work keeping a smile on your face behind that bar all night, you know? It gets tiring. I can do chirpy, if that's what you mean. Chirpy? Yeah. I kept it up long enough at the Turk's Head when I was behind the bar. I'm four years before that at the Rose and Crown. Until the landlord died, that is. Somehow I can't see you as a barmaid. There's a lot to me you haven't seen, Dougie. So what do you say? Well? Uh, yeah, well, all right. Well, we'll give it a try then, shall we? I'll see you at six. Right. Here. Is it right you've taken Edna on behind this bar? It's only temporary. Uh, yeah, mm. and so with that Millennium Dome, Dougie, and look at stink that comes. <laughs> yeah, well, you could be right. I've just got off the phone to the Turk's Head, last place she worked behind the bar. It's a new landlord, but he's heard the stories. She were a disaster. Yeah, well, this is a great start. Six o'clock, I said. It's ten past now. Where is she? Oh, she'll still be doing herself up like Scooby-Doo's supper. <laughs> That'd take some work, that would. Hey, look, boss, I won't worry about this. If she doesn't turn up, it's a lucky escape, believe <laughs> me. Yeah. Hello, Fred. Dougie, Peter. Sorry I'm late. The bus didn't turn up. Uh, no problem, uh, Yeah, You know what to do. You bet, love. Right, who's first? There you go, love. Thanks, I'll keep the change. Oh, thank you. Is this permanent, then, you serving behind bar? Well, we'll have to see how it goes. You're looking very well, Mr Elliot. You are? There's a real sparkle in your eye. Hey, and have you been working out in the gym? Oh, well, well, well uh, yeah, hmm. Well, I've been uh, shifting a few sides of beef this past few weeks. <coughs> Keeps a man in shape, does that, you know? I can see that. It suits you. Well, I'll give her a due, Dougie. She, uh, she's trying hard, eh? I can't believe it's the same woman. Perhaps it isn't. Perhaps it's Edna's sister. The charming one she keeps locked up in the attic. <laughs>